The Coen brothers are a unique writing and directing duo with a pretty broad range to their style. The films they've made throughout their career have swung between outright goofy and more serious mood pieces. Blood Simple, their debut film, gives us a glimpse at their filmmaking roots, the things they value in filmmaking that would blossom into what makes the Coen brothers' writing and direction so special. Unlike some of the other directors we've looked at in this series so far, we can almost learn as much from how Blood Simple differs from the rest of their films as we can from how it is similar to them. Let's look at these differences and similarities and examine how Joel and Ethan Cohen made Blood Simple and how that's affected their approach to filmmaking throughout their career. The Directors Before series is made possible by Mubi. Go to mubi.com slash thomasflight for your 30-day free trial. The Cohen brothers personally raised the money to make their first film from private investors. They made a short promotional trailer and lugged a projector into people's living rooms, gave their sales pitch and demo, and raised over half a million dollars, one small investment at a time. Violent exploitation films were popular at the time and relatively cheap to make, so the Coens set out to make a film that would play to that market. Sam Raimi, who the Coens have worked with several times, had received a lot of success in the exploitation genre, and the influence of his films like Evil Dead is visible in Blood Simple. Many auteur directors avoid popular genre filmmaking, but at the very beginning, the Coens played to a specific genre out of practicality to help sell the film. This trend has continued though throughout their career, and they've made films that cover an amazing range of genres. Film noir. Was he a huckster or opportunity? The real McCoy. Musicals, romantic comedies, gangster films, Put one in his brain. Yeah. and westerns. But while these films are identifiable within their genre, the brothers always bring their unique flair to the film often breaking or subverting the genre's conventions. <laughs> you hear that thing? My kid is as smart as a whip. We can see this clearly in Blood Simple, which looks and feels like an exploitation flick, but leans away from the violence and sleaze that defines the genre and towards a more cerebral story centered around unique characters and a layered plot. Give me a call whenever you want to cut off my head. I can always crawl around without it. <laughs> Their ability to do this, to take the coloring page of a given genre and color outside its lines in an artful way, has produced some of the most unique genre films of the last few decades. While the brothers don't define an explicit style for themselves in Blood Simple, we do see echoes of their first film in several of their later films. We see an early version of the quiet, dramatic pacing of No Country for Old Men. Both films contain scenes where tension and suspense are built without dialogue. We see the sort of dark comedic irony that will be prominent in many of their later films, especially Fargo and The Man Who Wasn't There. The tension of this scene in Blood Simple comes from the dramatic irony of one of the characters knowing more about a murder than the other. We both did it for each other. That's what's important. I don't know what you're talking about. And they use a very similar scenario to create dramatic irony in The Man Who Wasn't There. What happened to you? I don't know what's going on. I... I don't know what happened to Big Dave. I know some of it. The Coens often tell stories of characters whose harebrained schemes have gone awry, leading to misunderstanding and confusion which they use for comedic effect. <laughs> the brothers have an incredible knack for making films with a serious deadpan tone, as well as movies that are downright goofy and absurd. Some of their most interesting work manages to flirt with both extremes. Having a good time? I don't like this kind of talk. What'd you come here for? In Blood Simple, we see their more serious side. Raising Arizona, their second film, shows us the other side of the coin. Horse like 
cried, baby. He cried. Well, I know that. Now, come on, honey. We better leave. You go right back up there and get me a toddler. I need a baby high. They got more than they can handle. In a way, the movies are similar. Both stories of illegal schemes gone awry, but where one is dark and suspenseful, the other is comedic and goofy. The rest of the brothers' filmography will be spent moving between these extremes. Sometimes, like with the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, both are exemplified within the same work. If there's a strong thread throughout their filmography, it lies less in a specific visual style or type of story, and more in abstract attractions to quirk and dark humor which we see in Blood Simple. I'd like to see his face when he found the dead end. <laughs> A strong sense of location is often important in their films. Blood Simple's Texas locale is emphasized at the beginning. Well, what I know about is Texas. And down here, you're on your own. And many of their films will similarly ground themselves in a place often as uniquely illustrated as the characters the Coens write. The brothers frequently frame their stories at the beginning using voiceover. The world is full of complainers. But the fact is, nothing comes with a guarantee. My grandfather was a lawman, father too. Me and him were sheriffs at the same time, him up in Plano and me out here. They call Los Angeles the city of angels. I didn't find it to be that exactly. Yeah, I worked in a barber shop, but I never considered myself a barber. The endings of their films often leave the audience unsettled. They rarely just hand you what you were expecting or hoping for. And their writing tends to be intricate, with a great deal of attention paid to repeating ideas and character humor. What'd you do with the bodies? It's taken care of. The less you know about it, the better. How did you cover the money? Oh, it's been taken care of. And the less you know about it, the better. This will not stand. This will not stand, this aggression against uh, Kuwait. This will not stand, you know? This aggression will not stand, man. Just like the Coens haven't confined themselves to a single type of story, they haven't confined themselves to a specific visual style either. The look of a Coen Brothers film is largely dictated by the cinematographer they are working with for each film. There's a great deal of visual diversity in their filmography. From the start, their collaboration with DP Barry Sonnenfeld was marked by vibrant and colorful lighting palettes, often featuring hard directional lighting. This stands in stark contrast to the diffused naturalistic quality of their films done with Roger Deakins and the softer, almost painterly look of their films with Bruno Delbonnel. Their look has evolved over time and in many ways has become more subdued. It's hard to imagine shots like this one in their more recent films and they don't use wide lenses as often since they started working with Roger Deakins. The brothers have had repeated collaborations with many great talents, but most of them are not featured in Blood Simple. However, one in particular stands out. The brothers met and cast Frances McDormand as their female lead for Blood Simple. It would be her breakout role, leading to a vibrant, successful career. McDormand and Joel Cohen would get married the same year Blood Simple was filmed, and she would become their most frequent collaborating actor. What would Ed and Little Angel do if a truck came along and splattered your brains all over the interstate? Where would you be then? While the first films of some directors set the tone for the rest of their career, Blood Simple merely gives us a hint and a taste of what was to come. While the Coens admit it's a little rough around some of its edges, Blood Simple showed the brothers have a unique voice, and it would be the first foray into filmmaking of perhaps one of the greatest writing and directing duos we've seen. This is part four of the Directors Before series. This series is brought to you by Mubi. Mubi is a cinema streaming and download service with a focus on curation. It's not just a site that you go to to watch movies, it's a site you go to to find cool and interesting things to watch that you're not gonna find anywhere else. They have 30 movies at a time. Every single day they add a new one and take one away. It's a hand curated library and if you like the kind of directors and films I'm talking about in this series, you're probably going to be interested in the types of stuff that they curate. You can try it out for free for 30 days when you go to mubi.com slash thomasflight. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash thomasflight for your 30 day free trial. Thanks again to Mubi for sponsoring the Directors Before series. 
Thanks so much for watching. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Go to patreon.com slash thomasflight to learn how you can support my channel on an ongoing basis. I also want to thank Julian Palmer of The Discarded Image for his notes and feedback on this video. They were very helpful. He recently made a video about the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, which is really great. Talk to you next time.